Hi Libra, welcome to your May 2019 relationship reading. It's Raina here. So um, I'm hoping I can get through this reading. I hear some rumbling about a black away and I'm, I'm thinking that might be leaf blowers and I'm hoping they're not going to advance. So this reading is intended for people who have relationship issues as well as people who have um, broken up from a relationship and are ha having a hard time kind of like moving on with their life. So um, it's just basically to give you some food for thought in your particular situation, maybe a different way of looking at things. Uh, more than, you know, just the typical prediction, fortune telling kind of things. Although, you know, there are some elements of like, you know, what energies may be coming in, but I think things come in based upon, how, you know, the choices that you make and the attitudes that you hold. I think that they're very much connected. The heart of the matter is the Knight of Pentacles. This could literally be like a, a Taurus individual, but this could um, be like a certain, um, how can I put it, a defense mechanism that you have employed in order to get through a very difficult time in your life. Um, one thing that I want to mention about the Knight of Pentacles in terms of how it affects relationships is that when somebody is very focused on um, making money, I mean, this card can be about somebody who just wants to enhance themselves materially, uh, and is is like kind of on a um, course to do so. <clears throat> that that may uh, impact adversely one's relationship. So um, it's like we always have to make choices in life. We can't just assume that we can do whatever we want and it won't impact the rest of the relationship. Usually, I don't see Libra as a sign that is just like the Knight of Pentacles in that sense. We could maybe broaden it to include any kind of career aspirations that have kept you out of, you know, a very close um, relationship. For instance, if you're married and you, you have a certain vigorous, rigorous uh, work schedule that means that you are not... Um, there um, as much as maybe you should be that can you know wreak havoc on the relationship obviously and I guess this could also imply uh, um, apply to your spouse your partner if they if they are like that maybe you feel neglected I could see that happening with Libra in the past position we have the Knight of Swords and um, and this is a card of, you know, telling it like it is, being very, um, you know, blunt about a situation. Um, some I wouldn't be surprised if this is even talking about two different people in some cases that um, unless this is the same person and they've changed. Um, but this kind of a person is going to be like an, air sign but they have fire in them so uh the earth sign the air signs are gemini libra aquarius and the fire signs are aries leo and sag and basically that combination is all about being very um in your face um this is the card of the lawyer so there you go it, it might have been it probably for this type of reading is talking about thinking about or maybe even consulting a lawyer <clears throat> about your situation but maybe you haven't um, made up your mind about whether or not you want to go through with it the higher message is the Queen of Cups this is about that intuitive side um, of things and this is important you know you notice how this is Queen of cups so this is a double feminine energy Libra is a masculine sign and even female Libra individuals will tend to employ logic and analysis in their decision-making and 
it's not necessarily uh, very, I think, common or popular for a Libra person to really go on and on about their intuitive side. Although some of you, are, <laughs> I'm sure, might say that's not true. I'm very psychic or I'm very this or that. I'm talking about as an archetype, as a, a, si a sign in and of itself, which we know that's not what astrology is about. Astrology is about all these influences coming together. And, and even that, even influences coming together doesn't tell the full story of each individual. Uh, but it's the best that we have. We can't, you know, it's a great tool to use, but it's not the end-all be-all. But the, the archetype of, of any air sign is going to include really um, valuing the mind to solve one's problems, to communicate, to do all of those things. And the intuitive side might be even in some cases, maybe not all cases, maybe not all Libra people, but in some cases, um, even uh, demeaned, diminished, and seen as, you know, superstition, um, magical thinking, and, and thinking that magical thinking is a bad thing, uh, delusions, and things like that. And so, that can be kind of frustrating because there are people who really do believe that, that they are more than just their minds that and and the thing is that your mind can really trick you into a certain position that serves the the, the shadow self and the the toxic ego so it everything has to be kept in its proper perspective i do believe in in the mind being important but i don't think it's uh, everything and the, so this is the higher message. So it's about cultivating that part of yourself or inviting it back into your life. If you have kind of uh, straight away and saying, you know, okay, I know what my mind thinks about my relationship. I want to know what my heart thinks. I want to know. And yes, your emotions can be clouded uh, for sure. But even in, the, in that case, I still feel like we're capable of tuning into, um, first of all, what's really going on, and secondly, um, how to best deal with it. Libra, is uh, being an air sign, isn't necessarily tuning in emotionally. There's, there's a, kind of a disconnect between the emotions and the intellect. This can help you uh, probably more times than it can ever impede you, Libra, because you're not the kind of person to get hung up on. Um, even if you're like, your, I was going to say your emotions, negative emotions, even if you're going through a lot of uh, problems in your relationship, of all the elements, with perhaps the exception of Earth, but you're able to really um, put that aside and not allow it to affect you at a deeper level. And that is a good thing. So a lot of times people who are air signs, and maybe they have the sun and moon in air, especially, because you, you, know, you could be a sun in Libra and have the moon in Scorpio, and that's a whole different ball of wax. But if you, you know, are double air sign, sun and moon, this can make you a lot more detached and capable of, uh, you know, navigating the seas of life, the turmoil of life, without allowing it to affect you personally, I mean. What crosses you is the Knight of Wands. I have two interpretations of this. First of all, in terms of the other person, perhaps they are a, um, <clears throat> a like, um, a womanizer. I I, I am see, reading this as a male energy. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm recording this in the morning. I'm just starting to talk. And uh, so I am seeing this. This is a double masculine energy, Knight of Wands. 
this is somebody maybe has a high testosterone level and um, and does not and has a fear of commitment even if you are married to this person they may have a fear of commitment and now that they are in a marriage that makes them even more uh, wanting to be free if they were allowed to be free maybe they would have an easier time committing it's one of those paradoxes um, and that makes me wonder if the the idea of the knight of swords and the knight of pentacles is that this person is starting to say that they're working all the time and maybe they're not maybe they're cheating um, that they're using that as an excuse that they're working because we have the knight of swords and that guy is more to me um, about telling it like it is and this knight of pentacles this is out of character for that guy uh, he is typically the knight of swords the knight of wands these knights are rather chaotic they're not uh, people who they're not consistent like the knight of pentacles so that could be a little bit um, creating a sense of uh, suspicion within you if you've noticed a, a pattern changing and oh by the way the knight of wands is is associated with Sag Sagittarius specifically I always I was kind of surprised when I found that out I assumed it would be Aries and I still kind of think of Aries but it's funny this is a card connected in the major arcana with Sagittarius the temperance card is the advice this is a card that is kind of reminds me of Libra in terms of balance, but also one foot in the water, one foot on land. Don't become too spaced out. Don't become overly um, earthbound. And so it's about the balance between spirit and matter. And in this particular situation, um, it is to me, just going back to the Queen of Cups, that um, perhaps this is something that you need to kind of um, approach from a more spiritual point of view. Uh, maybe you have been trying to deal with it. You know, the legal system to me is part of the world. Uh, this person is violating our marriage contract. This person is breaking their agreement with me. And on the spiritual level, what does it mean? I'm not choosing wisely. What am I doing? Why did I get together with this person? What was inside of me that needed to um, choose this person that I knew was afraid of commitment? Why do I seem to choose the people that are afraid of commitment? Could I be afraid of commitment? And I'm, you know, not aware of that a aspect of myself. The outcome is the full card. This is like that new journey. Um, you know, embarking upon a new path. I was just thinking today, oh, I haven't done a video yet for the moon in Libra, the second new moon, uh, <laughs> not new moon, full moon, and how this one is like the culmination of something. But I was thinking about your sign, Libra, maybe because I knew I, I, I had to do your sign for this, but this is for May, and the full moon, as I record this, hasn't even happened yet. And I was thinking, I wonder if a lot of Libra people are going through a lot of changes right now. And I was just thinking out loud, you know. I mean, I know somebody I could ask that question to. But I feel like he's been going through changes for years. So this is nothing new. Um, and the point being that relationship issues will surely come to the surface. Um, as they do anytime there's a full moon. We have that opposition between the the self and the other um, the the emotions that well I mean this particular full moon is the self and the other the self being Aries the sun 
and and um, the moon in in uh, Libra, which represents the seventh house of committed partnership, and um, and for you specifically, Libra, these two full moons at zero and twenty nine degrees, respectively, are you know kind of bookends to your life at this point in your journey. So you may resolve something that has kind of come to come into your awareness back in March about a relationship, a significant relationship. And the 29th degree, I was, because I was trying to think of the title of the video, and I, I, I still, now I can't remember it. I should always carry a, a notebook around with me. But I knew it was going to be like, um, you know, something's got to give, but that's not it, because it's like a finality to it. It's really like coming to a head and understanding that, there's no doubt anymore in your mind that you have to change the situation. But this is a full moon for you. So this means you're going to be changing yourself. You're going to find out more about yourself and change yourself. Now, uh, <laughs> I know I'm saying this in future tense, but a lot of you probably will be watching this before April 19th. So that's okay if I say that in the future tense. And if you're watching after April 19th, that's you can still see if I was right about that. And um, so anyway, I'm going to leave it there, but I think that the Fool card is a great card. Um, absolute new beginnings. And, uh, you know, your adventure through life continues, but a new chapter begins. Okay, that's what I have for you, Libra. If you'd like a personal reading, the link is below. Have a great month. Bye.